Hello and welcome back to another episode of the N- uh, No Talks Allowed podcast. I was about to say NTA, but as we all know now, by now, there's another multiple other podcasts called NTA. So we're going to call it No Talks Allowed. And with me today is only... We're missing someone. We're missing someone. There's only Big Pot with me. Oh, where's the, who, where's the fun guy? We don't know. But he will be back next week. Hopefully. Hopefully. There will be episodes in the future that, that will contain just the two hosts. So, this is the first one. Let's begin. There's always a first time for everything. All right. In today's episode, we're going to tackle a few subjects that are seri- near and dear to my heart and that are, are very serious. Uh, it's not going to be as a fu- as fun-loving episode as usual because those subjects n- w- need to be tackled by someone. And I don't see a lot of people tackling. One of the subjects we're going to start with is should one install outdated, unmaintained packages? What do unmaintained packages mean? Are they really outdated or future uh, com- or feature complete? Do they really need to be uh, updated for all cases? What about for orphan packages? Wow, that's a long one. First, let's talk about what each of these terms means. We need to explain for our listeners and whoever's watching this, we need to explain each term. So let's first talk about outdated and orphan packages. This this is specifically for packages in your package repo, where... Outdated packages mean that the pa- the local package, the package you install from, I don't know, your Ubuntu repositories, Arch repositories, has a version that is older than the one that they, they have released upstream Correct. by the creators of the, of the program. While unmaintained could mean that, or while orphaned mean that there is no, no developer, no maintainer whatsoever for that package in your your a distress package repository. Yeah, now, but yeah, outdated also have a different meaning. It uh, it depends on the case. It's case by case. Like yes. I'm going to give an example, a very simple example, which is Manjaro. Outdated package, they could be shipping an outdated package as long as they're shipping everything around it because a package is part of a whole. It's not yes. a single package and that's it. Yes. A package is part of a whole. It has dependency. As long as the distro that is shipping the outda- so-called updated package with outdated dependencies as well, the dependencies that work for this specific version of the package, that's fine. There is yeah. no problem there. But the problem... This is still problematic because sometimes it happens that the one of one, if not more, of its dependencies, core dependencies, gets updated, while the package is hasn't been updated by the maintainers of uh, by, by the uh, maintainers of the uh, Manjaro repository. Then the problem will appear. Yeah. So be careful. Uh, distro maintainers should be very careful. I hope that in 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 an ideal world, that those people working maintaining the dis, the, the the package, the outdated package for Manjaro, for example, or any other distro for that matter, are talking to the developer of said package, keeping everything in line, yeah. in check. Now. If you think about it, uh, people, uh, groups like Debian, which are all known for sta- being stable and uh, many times having packages outdated by years, yeah, pe- uh, certain people are angry at them because they do not. Or they, they are less safe because they might not ship uh, new versions, which means they don't ship uh, security updates, which is actually generally not true. Correct, because they still do uh, security. V- Bug fixes, security fixes. They, they backport they, the bug they fixes. They backport yeah. them. Yes, they do what is called what is called patching. They they find the the patch that is uh, they, they find the 
specific sections of the upstream source code that needs to be changed, and then they create a file on the system or in their in their package repository called patch, which then during the build process of the pa package uh, removes uh, removes the old code and puts the new code in. Correct. And I'll give a very, uh, for, for anyone listening or watching, I'll give a very simple exam uh, example that is the case today. The Steam Deck. People, when they, when they go to the desktop mode and run <coughs> Terminal, it starts NeoPatch. And they see that they are still running kernel 5.15 and they go crying. Look, everybody is using kernel 6.8.x. We are still on 5.15. The Steam Deck is outdated. The Steam Deck is uh, is old. The Steam Deck, the Steam OS is is crap. No, that's not true. As Big Pot just said, they're backporting a lot of the machine spe purpose specific patches yeah. from newer kernels to five point fifteen. If you don't see the version number increase, that doesn't mean. That that does not necessarily mean that it does not include the the required fixes, the security fixes, it. and sometimes even feature fixes, whether it bug fixes, whether it be performance cases and stuff like that. That's especially yeah. true in something like uh, something like Steam Deck's kernel, which probably ships performance uh, increasing. Uh, it's, patches. It's as a custom well. kernel. It's a custom yes. kernel, basically Steam Deck specific kernel, and guess. There's another reason why they don't backport everything uh, from from newer kernels because the Steam Deck, as BigPod earlier said, it's purpose built. It's a purpose built machine for targeted for gaming. Why would they need uh, patches that target <laughs> content creation, that target uh, uh, c compiling or whatever? They don't or, need any of that. Or very simply, why would they need a uh patch for i think things doesn't have thunderbolt so no. why would they need a patch for thunderbolt or i need the feature for thunderbolt enabled the module for thunderbolt they don't have thunderbolt or why would they any need? other any other thing that isn't included in that specific hardware piece exactly so and plus the fact that their efi partition something that can be fixed software wise but so far, they're sh still shipping an uh, EFI partition that's 512 megabytes big, so they cannot back, uh, ma uh, ship a kernel bigger that doesn't fit on that EFI partition. Yeah. But that's a stupid reason. That's just, an, although just one they, of they, them. Although they could have could ship a kernel that isn't on the EFI. Yeah, they can but... put it anywhere. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, so this is outdated and uh, orphaned packages. There's unmaintained packages as well. Yes. And, and, that, and that could talk about packages that are packages in the repository or yeah. or even the upstream itself because uh, people unmaintained basically targets upstream most. Yes. And the specific here is if let's say a program doesn't need any more features, then it will be called feature complete. Does that mean that that program <laughs> is unmaintained? Not yeah. necessarily. Exactly. Uh, you could still be fixing bugs and uh, security fixes. And I'm going to use a, another very good example, this time myself. Because when I created my post-install toolkit, I already had in mind, I already knew that it will be unmaintained for a long time why because it's feature complete it doesn't need any additional features anymore well it won't be unmaintained because you will still be making sure that it isn't buggy and that if things change in future you're gonna fix yeah. them i'm saying unmaintained from the point of view of the regular user because when they don't see commits being applied, yes. uh, be being but... applied in a long time to them, but, it means unmaintained. But that is more users not, not understanding the actual yeah. terms. Exactly. That's, that's why I'm explaining. We need, to, we need to educate the users. Yeah. That's why I, what I'm doing. I'm educating the user. If you, see, if you don't see any commits for months on end, 
Doesn't mean it's a bad software. Or it mean doesn't software mean it's is buggy or has security bugs because exactly. maybe now they were reported. There could be, of course, there could be in a very there could be security issues in a very active repository. Yeah, that doesn't mean that the activity doesn't ex- doesn't bring any more safety, any more security, any more stability. Correct. What brings the what brings it is. It's them fixing those. So you need to know what kind of issues, what kind of commits they are. Correct. If, you, there, are, so if there are no bug fixes, maybe there they weren't any bugs found. Correct. That's, that's, uh, that's the, the, the status of my toolkit. It's, it hasn't received a single commit in a month and a half or more. And I don't think it will receive any for a while longer because it's feature complete. It does what it uh, set out to do. But I will, of course, if somebody uh, reports an issue that I need to fix, maybe a typo somewhere, a package, uh, a package name has changed like KDE did recently instead of Wayland Protocols. Now it's called uh, Plasma Workspace. And I have Plasma Work, uh, the, the Wayland protocols instead of Plasma Workspace in my package. They report the issue. I change the package name and I push a commit upstream. But other than that, there will be no uh, commits to, to the repository. And I have to commend you on that because there, there are a lot of open source maintainers, open source creators who try and cram features in just because they need to keep it moving. They need to keep adding additional features, even if yeah. those features and becomes are bloated and it not becomes... important. Yes, correct. That's the that... and that's then the death of thousand paper cuts for a project. Exactly. That's why I don't target. I I receive a lot of requests. I have received a lot of requests to add this, to add that. To, uh, a per, there was a request for me to add the entire VSD stack. A VST plugin stack. If you don't know what a VST plugin is, it's audio, uh, audio, audio production software uh, plugins. Uh, pl- plugins. Uh, they they wanted me to wanted me to add the entire stack, and the entire stack was made out of twelve thousand plugins, and they're all open hand source hand. ones. I'm talking yeah. about the open source ones. I'm not talking about the proprietary ones. Uh, I was like, sorry, sir, no. However, we can reach a compromise. So I selected the be- the best ones. I did research. I spent days making doing some research. I selected only the ones that are compatible with a lot uh, the biggest number of applications including OBS. And I added those to to the script. And that was it. I stopped there. I'm not and some other people want me to add a ton of games, boss games to to, to the thing. I was like, first off, boss games are not the best games out there. They're just a proof of concept more, more, more times than not. And other times they're just crappy. Yeah. So and I'm like, I no. do think that, that trying, to, trying to constantly keep new features is actually what caused people to think that I unupdated, un uncommitted software that software doesn't get commits often means unmaintained yeah i think that's what's the ultimate cause of that thinking by by users yeah uh and uh i wanted to tackle another thing uh feature complete packages some people don't think on linux they do exist of course they do they they do exist look at well, my my toolkit is uh, is not an example, but there are a lot of packages that haven't, as Bigbot said again. Uh, there there's a lot of projects out there that haven't received a uh, a single commit in twenty thirty years. Yeah, that doesn't mean they are not working. They are outdated, or they will that they will cause any issues. They will be fixed if. They require fixing, but other than that, as far as they work, uh, as long as they work, that's it. Yeah. We, we, yeah. we, uh, there's something people don't understand. We as project creators, I'm not going to say developers because I'm not a developer, but I create scripts. Uh, 
we target feature completion. We want to reach a point where uh, uh, our project is feature complete to the point where we can set it and forget it and just come back to it in case there's a major vulnerability. That's it. Yes, or we want to add something for us. Because at the end yeah. of the day, this software, a lot of open source software is built out of necessity, not not really a, a wish, but more, or, or not wish, but just because we want to make something open source. It's Most of the time it's built because of necessity. Yeah, so it's my it's, a tool like that. It's my it's you have uh, reminded me of my favorite saying ever. Necessity is the mother of all creation. Yes, that is my favorite saying of all time because especially in open source, that is the most real realistic saying ever. Because we ninety nine point nine, if not a hundred percent of the time. All creation have was built out of necessity. I needed necessity to... or 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 wish to have something. Yeah, which like, is a necessity of some, some sort. Like for example, in my case, I'm working. I'm currently working on a script that installs KDE Plasma in Arch Root. After one has uh, gone through the basics of Arch install, selecting, uh, skipping the profile section if they're targeting KDE, that is. Uh, and they can run that, sc uh, that script in Arch root, and it's going to prompt them, do you want a complete installation? You want a minimal installation? You want a customized installation, which is my customized installation? Or you want a selective installation, where you select each and every package? Something I've been begging the Arch install developer to include in, in the script, and he keeps ignoring me. So I'm like... It's a necessity of mine. I don't. I like to go through the Arch install to do all the basics, the partitioning, the locale, all these annoying little steps. But I like to go through the installation of Plasma my way. And I like to have options. Maybe I want to install it for someone who wants everything. I just select the option and it will take care of the rest. So I'm doing, I'm writing this script out of necessity. I created that script out of necessity. Yeah. But I'm going to share it with the public, so it's going to become useful for someone else. Yeah. So. So even I, I built myself a lot of things that I, I need that are I find a hole in something I'm doing. So I built for myself. La yeah. Last thing I built was a, a cache layer for some of the projects I built. It's yeah. very specific to me. But I needed it because things were just moving too slow because of that, because of complex database calls with a lot of items in the database. So I, I built a cache layer. Yep. And Took me a while, thing, but I built it. Same thing with Zero Linux. When I created Zero Linux, I created it out of necessity because I wanted a way to install Arch Linux the easy way using a GUI package installer, and it snowballed from there. But uh, to be honest with you, no. now that I stopped maintaining zero Linux and I did my script and I'm done with it and I I'm bored. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of bored. You need to but find yourself a new project. I'm working on a, on a few other projects, but they're very small. They're not going to take a long time. But And I think this is a good segue to our next topic of question. Yeah. So... What open source projects we contribute to, or what things in open source world we contribute to? Do we have any projects in our pipelines? And uh, how we use open source? Yeah. I'm and to... do we prefer it over yeah. proprietary? 100%. That answers the question 100%. Open source freedom. Freedom. And when we say free, Open source, the free does not mean cash free. money. Yeah. It doesn't mean money for the listeners out there. It means freedom of creation, freedom of choice, freedom to do whatever you want. But when I am offline and I'm not doing anything, I am working on a lot of scripts. 
I love bash scripting. Bash scripting makes me happy. I don't I'm not a developer. I don't know advanced language. I just limit myself right now to to the thing that I love most because I want to perfect it to a certain degree where I can call myself a bash profession. Once I bypass that uh, I reach the goal in that part, I will tackle something else, but not before. I don't like I'm not the type of person who likes to um how should I put it? To learn this this language and that language and that language and that language all at the same time. No, 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 no. no. I like to start with one, finish it, then tackle the one after. Finish it, then tackle the one after. That's the way I do things. Because my mental capacity is limited. So, <laughs> uh, But I do write a lot of scripts out of necessity, and I do share them whenever I can, when I see that it's going to benefit somebody else. I don't read a lot. I, I, as we put it in the, in the FOSS world, I fuck around and find out a lot. Uh, I, build, I write a script, test it, blow out the whole VM, because I test the right way of doing it is do all the testing in a VM, never test it on your uh, live system. Uh, and I do one other thing that nobody knows about. Nobody has, I never told anyone about, but I am kind of working on my own theme, KDE Plasma theme. Slowly, but surely I'm getting into SVGs right now how to build a theme out of SVGs. I'm not into the coding part yet. I'm still figuring out uh, SVGs and how you build SVGs and how you color them, how you... It's a long process, but I want to create my own theme, my own class, because with Plasma 6, we I need to also learn, I don't know, whatever. You know that, that JSON language, because they now use JSON. A very good language for defining things yeah it's very simple it's simple. m simpler than uh than it used to be it was a very complicated dot desktop file metadata dot desktop file so, yeah they were using the desktop of uh the desktop format which is yeah and it was oh. and it was uh very long now the json file is just like 24 lines yeah json so, is pretty nice yeah, I I am getting in, uh, into that because I'm the, I really don't want to keep using other people's themes because I don't I'll take a, I'll give you an example Layin theme I've been using it ever since I started using Arch Linux and KDE but it has reached a point uh, where the developer is no longer maintaining it we have been uh, trying to get his attention for over a year now uh, to, to to start fixing bugs. He's like, no reply at all. Hmm. So uh, it's functional on Plasma 6, but it's got a lot of bugs. A lot of bugs. So I'm like, unless I can maintain it, I don't want to use it. That's where I'm at with uh, free open source. Oh, the most important thing I'm doing right now is I am reporting bugs upstream Every uh, uh, every time I find something, like I've been reporting bugs, re <laughs> and nobody's going to be surprised when I say this, to Kwin for the past two weeks, because for whatever reason, if I leave my computer and don't touch it for twenty thirty minutes, I come back, plasma shell crash. Hmm. It just has a message, a dialog box in the center of the screen. Plasma shell crashed and recovered. They have the good thing of recovering. It's Now it doesn't crash and stay crashed. It doesn't bring down everything with it. It just crashes and re relaunches itself. And everything is still functional and the way you left it. That's a great thing they did. But come on, crashing without touching the computer and didn't have any programs open. Zero. Nothing. So I've been reporting bugs related to that for the past week. I've been reporting bugs to OBS and many other projects. So now I'm becoming more useful upstream to, to projects. So. so
uh, what have you been up to you 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 what have you been up to i well as many of you probably know i'm using this distro thing called fedora silver blue and more specifically using images by universal blue which i'm also a part of and i help out there i do some some PR approval, so a review what what is happening in that PR, and if if everything is okay, I say yes, this PR can be merged. If I don't think everything is okay, I say no, and I say what needs to be changed. And I talk a lot in their dis- Discord channel. Oh, uh, well, that's give not my surprising. <laughs> but give my opinions. Are... Well, highly uh, unorthodox opinions as well. <laughs> But aren't you part of Bazite too? Bazite is part of Universal Blue. That's yeah. all under the same umbrella. I don't work that much on Bazite. Bazite uh, has its own team. I mostly work on uh, another another image called Bluefin. Bluefin. Yes. I'll have to check that one out. It's but... based. It's mostly using GNOME, but now it has a version of it called Aurora, which uses KDE. Yes. If you're not, if you, if you, if you're the listener not watching the video, I just gave a thumbs up. Whenever I hear KDE, I give the thumbs he up. He's really, really, really happy for some reason. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, the reason I asked about Bazite was because I, I, it's becoming very popular lately. Yeah, yeah. It's even and... Chris Chris Titus Tech is loving it. All elect- for the wrong reasons, I know, but he's loving it anyway. All, all of Universal Blue is getting a lot of attention these days, it seems, and I am pretty well, happy about that. We're well, almost it, almost to the final final right version of the operating system, the Linux, which is great, system. and I I congratulate you on that. But slowly getting there, and soon we're gonna have a perfect Linux operating system. Perfect, far fetched. Yes, but. <laughs> But At least for me, to me, perfect. Okay, you can, you can, yeah. you can it's subjective. It's subjective. A few episodes back, we talked about what is a perfect distro, and that. Yeah, we're walking towards that. We slowly all, we and all steadily. target. Yeah, we all target perfection. Of course, if we don't target perfection, we'll reach nowhere. But and, you blue is a pretty like-minded group of people who want to make a desktop. Linux desktop more stable, more approachable, and better for ninety percent of users. Yeah, and experts in Linux here be dragons because it might not be as nice for you as it might be for the rest of. That's exactly what I was going to say. Like for for people like me who like who likes to build my distro uh, my system from the ground up, it's not uh, because it ships everything ready made out of the box. Yes. Uh, it's it, it doesn't give me enough to tinker with. Well, but you, I r- you you can clo- you can create a container file and you can tinker with it. Well, I in know. my I opinion, saw... better than anything you can do on a normal system. And chance of breaking it's much lower. Yes, and that's why it it, it brings me to my other point where I was going to say. I'm not going to say I'm never going to use it because there will be a point where Arch will be, I'll be so annoyed with Arch that I will need to try something else more stable that sort of, kind of, and since I messed with the Docker containers and distro box, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm more akin to use that specifically that will push me to use containers. And I love containers, specifically that Simple command called export. That's for use... Distrobox. Yeah, uh, Distrobox, sorry. Uh, for Distrobox, I can just install any package from AUR or Arch repositories and just add the export command, and I'll be able to use it in Baza or any Ublue distribution. Yeah. So I'm like. And any other distribution, mind yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. That's not limited to yeah, Bazite. It's any distribution where you, you you feel like you're missing the tools that you're used to. You could just use Distrobox. Just yeah, and it it doesn't break your system. And what the benefit of uh, Ublue is, is you break your system, 
just revert uh, one generation behind. That's it. And comparable to something like NixOS, it doesn't break conventions. No. And, and because it's it's built on on a model of pre-built the whole on the image-based model instead of local composition, it it allow a lot whole, whole class of errors that happen during install just don't happen when you update. And that brings me to a question since you are living in that world. For a person like me who ha who has a wow, did you hear the Discord? No. Okay, no. good. Okay. So uh, <coughs> sorry. With a person like me who has a shitty connection, is that ideal? <coughs> yes and no, depending on how you how you architecture the system. So I mean I would... if pulling pulling down the updates, like since it's going to pull down a whole image. Thankfully it doesn't pull down the whole image because of just a Docker's, differential. Docker's differential. not differential, it will pull down the layers that changed. Yeah, so different from anything from the anything from layer that changed down or up, depending on how you look at the stack. And amazing thing is you don't actually need your computer to do, do the download. If you have a Raspberry Pi or some sort of mini PC or or just or a home server, you can set up a, a very simple script and something like a, like a registry v2 or some other other distribution OCI distribution compliant repository registry that will at, you pu you pull down the image from that you push it to that registry and then you can use it on as many computers as you want or yeah or if you are a bit more adventurous you can create a pull through cache which is a bit more complex to set up but things like harbor and even registry v2 allow you to quickly create a pull through cache with which you can Ask your registry to to get something, and it will pull down from all from pull it down, and then push to your this, computer. So basically, it's kind of like Steam Cache. So yes. Basically, yeah. You download the games on a central computer, and whoever is watching this, excuse the delay. It's my Wi-Fi acting up. Uh. Okay. Is it better now? Slightly, but not much. <laughs> yeah, my Wi-Fi is uh, acting up. Anyway. Okay, go ahead. Uh, what uh, I was saying is, it's like uh, uh, Steam Cache. You, you set the, a, a system that downloads all your games, and then all the other machines will pull from that system locally over local networks. So basically, yeah. what you're saying is, it will download the, Im the main image on that computer, and then the other computers can pull from that local PC instead of pulling from online. From some central server you have locally. There yeah. is still there is no resource sharing capability yet, like you see with the for Wind Windows or Steam Steam uh, Steam lo local sharing of files. There is no such thing yet, but you can create a separate server that does that for you. That pulls yeah. down the image and you can then share it on all your computers. That's what yeah, I do. But... I, I have two machines that, that get constantly updated and I have a server. Yeah, I have a, but... I have it set up as a pull through cache. When my desktop updates, it will pull down the image, and when and my laptop updates, it, it... it just accesses the same server. And because the, that image already exists, it pulls it through, pulls it to my laptop instead of going all the way back to GHCR. Uh, but for me, in my case, if I want to install, let's say, Bazite, because the reason I want to install Bassite so much because the the, the package manager you just is really re really nicely called. It's uh, actually not a package manager. It's actually well, a task runner, and it is actually just a wrapper command around something around the open source task runner called Just. Well, the, wait, isn't it uh, built on top grade? Top grade is something else. It's one of the specific command, one of the specific tasks you just can run. Yeah, it's amazing. It, because when I saw it the first time, 
uh, I was like, isn't that upgrade? It's doing the same thing as yes, upgrade. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> what I love about top grade, if you haven't heard about top grade, it's a cross platform, uh, it's a cross distro compatible runner, as BigBot calls it. Uh, it uh, it runs all the pack package manager ma package managers you have on your system. Yeah. Basically, if you have a distro box, it's going to update distro box your firmware. Pac-Man, in case of Arch, uh, it's going to run uh, Snap. If you have uh, Snaps installed, it's going to run Flatback Update. It's going to run everything you have on your system. Yeah. Even, but there's a problem with that. I keep telling people. If you use top grade, be careful because it's going to pull the, uh, update your Git repositories as well, unless you specify it not to. And that could be problematic because when you're working on a pro in the middle of working on a project and you run top grade, it's going to update your project without you specifically asking it not to, and it's going to mess your whole work. So be careful with that. That part needs to yeah. be uh, omitted out unless you don't care about it. Now, let, let's go back to the topic, and since we did, a, did stray a bit too much we into the waters of Ublu, so <laughs> I don't really do any any other contributions to open source, but oh. I, but I do have a couple of ideas I want to implement, and maybe even open source. Uh, uh, projects will come. Projects will come uh, as we, as as you said earlier, necessity as necessity comes, and yeah. when you, you when and what what I mean by that is when we download a package and we want to use this package out of necessity, we discover bugs with this package. We cannot sit or idly by and just wish for the project to get fixed if we don't do something about it. This is where. Yeah contributions come uh, come into play this is where it's this is what's called contributions you don't need to be a developer to contribute this is the whole point of this discussion you don't need to be a developer you notice the bug yeah just go to github create an account simple you create and here's the thing a lot of people complain say oh i don't want to create a github account ah, i don't want to have to well you create Accounts on piracy websites and questionable websites, uh, thousands, uh, thousands of them. One more is going to hurt you. Come on. Just create an account on GitHub. Go to issues. You don't have to be. They ask some projects even hold your hand as to what you need to do and how to report by giving you a template. This is hold it. Can it get any easier? Come on, people. If you didn't get a reference to who I was imitating right there, you must be too young. Uh, anyway, God rest his soul. So you, uh, you go there, you just say, hey, I was doing this, 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 and that, and suddenly the application crashed. And then to, to which you will get a, 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 an, either an automated reply or a reply by the developer himself telling you, guiding you what you should do to get the logs. Because without logs, work uh, on fixing the issue will take a lot longer. Yeah. So Go in most it. cases, it, the only thing that's required is to run said application in terminal. Even though it's a GUI application that you run from the app menu, but once you run it in terminal and you take a screenshot, and you upload to GitHub. That's enough. That's your. There's your log. Yeah. So, so this is where you can how you can contribute to uh, upstream, and that's what you need to do. What's recommended to do for uh, things to get better, like in in like I said earlier, Kwin is crashing a lot. It has been crashing a lot recently, and it did receive like three updates in the past week. So they're working on it. That shows that they are working on it. And because I have been reporting said issues, and whenever the dialogue pops up and says, ask me to share the crash log, I say yes, because I enabled telemetry on my system because I want to contribute upstream. And telemetry in, in the Linux world does not mean Microsoft's 
I'm stealing your data telemetry or Google's uh, situation. What that means is every single crash that happens on your system is automatically sent upstream without uh, fingerprinting you, directly fingerprinting you. So your private information stays private. The only thing that gets pushed upstream is the crash log. That's it. Yeah. So don't treat it as a bad thing. I would rececommend everyone enable telemetry in on Gnome, XFCE, KDE, any desktop environment or window manager that uh, gives you that option, enable it. That's how projects will grow and get better. So our last subject uh, for today is AI in Linux. That's a controversial subject, and I chose it because it has been going around uh, a lot these days. But what I meant by AI in Linux, I didn't mean we shouldn't include AI in Linux. It's not a problem if we include AI in Linux, like in a piece of software, like in a, uh, as a helper tool. It's a tool. At the end of the day, AI is a tool. But what I meant by this was we shouldn't build distributions around AI. There are very few. I'm not going to say a lot. I'm not going to generalize. There are a few distros popping up here and there that are built so much around AI that if AI should ever go down, the distro will no longer function. It's a, it's a, AI is a core part of the distribution. That's what I want to discuss. Should it be, let us, uh, for those who are watching or listening, let us know via comments or via contact. Uh, let us know. What do you think? Should distribute more distributions start popping up, more distributions start popping up built solely around AI? Or are you with me when I say, uh, uh, we should you keep using at least for now keep using AI as a as an optional tool via other applications like uh, the way uh, VS Codium uh, VS Code is doing right now or VS Codium or Code OSS uh, like embedded in tools rather than inside the distro as a core element. What do you think, Bigpot? Well. I do understand that users want AI as a tool. They want it yeah. more and more, but having a dependence on it, I don't think yeah. is good at this this early stage because as we've seen, there is a lot of hallucinations. There is a lot of errors that happen through, through AI. And I think sole reliance on something in such an early stage of development is not healthy for the ecosystem. And another subject you alluded to before we started recording was the fact that even though AI is embedded in some tools, do not use it unless you, unless you understand the output. For example, a person like me who does basic bash scripting, I did try to use code, VS Code because right now VS Codium and Code OSS don't include uh, those plugins, but VS Code has this plugin uh, where you can you can open, you, I'll give you a very simple example. Ba, uh, Bash RC. You can open Bash RC. Tell AI in code to check for syntax errors or refactor the whole file. It will do if if your structure is is so bad that uh, you uh, it has to rewrite everything and. It, give you a complete different output or use more professional type output to, to a certain point where you no longer understand anything of what's being outputted, don't use it because yeah. you might end up shipping a product that's more broken than the initial one because as BigPod said, it's, uh, it, uh, it's some it, because it's in it, AI is in its infancy. It it's more erroneous than it is correct. Right? Yeah, and the problem is that uh, we actually like as a as a human as a humans as users we 
we think about what we copy paste from internet. At least I hope we do. At least I do. Yes. I do too. And we read what we copy paste. Yeah. You don't because just we understand go- what we're, co- we're we're copy pasting text basically. Yes. Not the- you won't just go and copy paste them pasting your copy and pasting your code without knowing what it's doing. Yeah. Because then you could be shipping bugs that you don't understand and don't know how to fix. Exactly. And, and essentially at this point AI should be taken exactly the same way. Yeah. It is that it generates well, your code, but I don't know that you're copy pasting it in. <laughs> I'll let everyone uh, in on a secret. Uh, sometimes I want to write a script for a uh, for a video. You know how I, I uh, when I cannot come up come up with ideas on how to structure the script, I go to ChatGPT uh, because English is not my first language, and I cannot come up with good and non-repetitive sentences. Because if I if I'm left alone to, to my own tools, I I will repeat myself a thousand times. So I ask ChatGPT, I give it the subject of a video, but I have to specify one specific thing, or otherwise people are gonna know it's ChatGPT giving me the thing. I say, give me, uh, write me a script about so and so product, while Sounding more human than AI. Think about a twenty-year-old first starting up with uh, with YouTube. Write a script that way. I have to specify what tonality it yeah. needs to use, you what to vocabulary to use. You have to be very exact. If you just give it general terms, you're gonna sound like AI because it glorifies all the subjects for whatever reason. Yeah, it uses very much a, a Silicon Valley style speak. Yeah, and it glorifies. It's like you're watching an ad. Yeah. So uh, you have to be very exact in what you're requesting. But when it comes to code, this is where danger begins. Scripting uh, uh, scripts for videos is not a big problem. But when yeah. you start turning that into code and you want to ship that code to the general masses, yeah, you might start with something you understand and you can fix. And, and then while you pass it through AI, you might end up with something you don't understand and have no absolutely no ability to repair. Every so often I use AI to just write something that I probably won't use, just to see how AI has evolved over the last every few months for and me, for ex- I can for tell me. you sometimes it takes two, three, four messages and even multiple conversations restarting conversations to get it to even output approximately what I want if I'm not very oh. exact in, oh. in very oh. exact terms what I want for that code to do sometimes it goes completely in the left field trust me I know what you're talking about because mo- most times when I'm asking it to write code, I end up taking parts of its first answer, parts of its uh, yeah. tenth answer, and parts of its hundredth answer, and combining all those together to come up with a functional code. And if you are using it for code, for the love of God, do know your wh- testing on a VM. Yes. And know what it's writing. And know what it's writing. Understand the code. Not only that. Not only that. Check that the code, uh, the license of the code that you're fitting out. Because more times than, more often than not, it's going to give you copyrighted code, parts of copyrighted code, and you might end up in big doo doo if you ship it without knowing. That's a huge problem. Yeah. Right license. Like how, how the, what comes out of, Comes AI is what not, out of a- AI is licensed, and that is still a giant Problem hole we do not yeah. understand yet. And yeah. that's they're that's working also, towards fixing it. They're working towards yes. It. That's also why I'm saying that it's still an infancy. Be very, very, very careful what you do with it. Exactly. That's why we shouldn't. Uh, distributions should. Right now, at least for now, 
and the near future uh, uh, so, uh, abstain from building a, a, a distro around AI or making it rely on AI uh, so heavily. In make it uh, ship it as a opt-in option or as a tool that users can choose to use or not at their own discretion, of course, with a huge disclaimer. The disc in this instance, in this case, having a huge disclaimer on anything that uses AI is recommended. A huge, in bold letters disclaimer, making the user aware of the uh, 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 how, do I, how do they say uh, usage of AI? Yeah, the consequences of the usage of AI. And I think, in my opinion, we should still just not include AI as a default yeah. anywhere. In my opinion, it should still all be opt in. You have yeah. to enable it and possibly even ins download it so it's not even present on on the system until you opt in. Yeah, the one of the distros I have to name because it's already sens sensationalized in the news is that Fedora wants to build a spin or a version that's completely AI driven. I don't know if I understood that article correctly or wrong. Uh, I'll have uh, I'll include uh, I'll send a link to Bitbot to include in the description. But Fedora is considering it's just a proposal, I think, to create a spin with a a AI in mind. So, yeah, that's what prompted this discussion. It's that scared. is not a good idea, in my opinion. Not yet. It's gonna take a few yet. years for the technology to mature. Yeah, it's we're not talking uh, uh, the amount of time that will take Wayland to mature because we, how long did it take Wayland to get uh, to get here? 20 years? Yes, but at the same time, Wayland was trying to replicate, actually safely replicate features f from what what is what is X11, which took how many years to develop? Yeah. How many years of development? Since 1984? Something like that, yeah. And yeah. We should remember that X11 is X11 because they were X10, X9, and before before it. Yeah. So and I was trying uh, to, to AI is not gonna. Up <laughs> yeah, something. AI is not gonna be there but or in a usable, trustable state for a while. <laughs> expecting AI to just be, be at the high level of working exactly how we need it to work and want it to work from day one or even year one. No, it's, it's, an, it's not maybe a decade, right approach. In a decade or two, maybe, but... Uh, I don't think it will take that long. It will take a couple of years, but not one year. But uh, Maybe by, of, by the end of this uh, decade. I don't know. In 2030 I don't hate plus. AI because... I cannot yeah. say I hate AI because I use it uh, when yeah. I need to, and I am someone who understands and when when i reach a point where i no longer understand is the the moment i call it quits i say to myself nope okay move on skip that i don't want to ship stuff that i don't understand to users i right. view it as a tool yeah i use it as Currently. a tool exactly yeah therefore but will it be tool forever eh. the at one point, it will it will become more than a tool. We should remember that. But at yeah. this point, at one point no, it will become it a companion. But at it's this a, it's point, it's going to remain as a tool for a long time. Yeah, but it's going to become better as a tool. But yeah. as a tool, not as a thing that will take over anything. Although some people are, I'm not going to name those people, but some people are working towards it taking over the world. Yeah, those are the bad actors. I'm not gonna name, but and just like with every tool, you should use it for, uh, you should use it appropriately. Yes, to have the best and... experience, and until it gets better, until it gets to the level we can call it a companion, not just a tool, we should, we should treat it. We should, we should make sure we do not, we do not 
over trust the output. Yeah, exactly. And I wanna I wanna end this uh, this episode on a funny note. There was someone on Mastodon who was requesting AI for the weirdest reason I've ever heard. And anybody watching and listening is going to laugh their ass off. And it's for the reason to help them cheat in games. With that, that was a great episode, guys. Uh, what do you think, Bigfoot? It was a good episode. And thank you guys for watching and listening. And if you like this two-man format, let us know. And I'm sure you're going to see it in future again. And uh, if you want to contact us, you know, you can send us an email to contact at fuckspace.com. And, and all of us, me, Steve, Josh, are all on Macedon. You can yeah. find us uh, via the screen names you're going to see on the screen down below. And in the show the notes, in the description, basically. in the descriptions, all three of us. Yep have YouTube channels where you can check out other content we create. Yep. We're all over the place, except me. If you want to join my Discord, feel free. Uh, it's uh, it's open to everyone. And I'll, I'm on Mastodon. That's it. YouTube, you'll see weekly episodes from me every Wednesday on on YouTube. And that's uh, and a monthly at the end of the month uh, where I talk random shit. And uh, Big Pod released a video recently. That was an interesting watch. Didn't understand a word about what he was saying, but it was interesting. Uh, yeah. I I'm. Hey, we use Linux. That doesn't mean we're smart. We can be idiots, too. Uh, ignorant people, too. Uh, but with that, we'll see you on the next one. Goodbye. See ya. Cut.